The title for my sermonette today is Accomplish Small Things. And to start, I'd like to ask you a quick question. I'd like you to think about this question throughout my sermonette, and if you're a note taker, you can write it down and maybe dwell upon it. My question is, what is the smallest thing in your life that you have done that has caused the most impact, either in the short term or over a long period of time? It can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. But what is that one small thing that has made such an impact? I firmly believe that it is our habits, the small things that we perform over and over again, those are the things that hold the most power in our lives. Now, in popular literature and science, there is a theme that says once you hit your mid-30s, that you are set in your ways, for the most part. The way that you've come so far is how you're most likely going to be the rest of your life. And they say that it takes an extraordinary act to change oneself. It takes a major life alteration, a, a big event. You can think of people who have, say, like a heart attack, right? All of a sudden, this event happens in their lives, and they're forced to confront the realities of their life. And maybe they have to take drastic actions in how they eat, their exercise, etc. Now, last week, I wrote an editorial on change and how most people don't really change that much in their life. You know, people like to think that they can change, but in reality, it's a lot of times a small portion of their life may change. But does that change really stick? Does it really affect their lives in a big way? One of the biggest issues, I think, with change is very few times do people stop and study how to make change stick in their lives. It's a very daunting task to really look into these things and to understand how you can change as a person. It's easy as human beings to get easily overwhelmed, to make forward progress for a little bit, and then something happens and, and you hit a roadblock and you, you stop making forward progress. Then not only do you stop making forward progress, sometimes you actually revert backwards, right? As Christians, we are asked to be constantly looking to change. And so it's imperative that we learn how to do it properly. You know, if we think we can go through this life and do whatever we want, never changing, never looking to do better, then we are not really interested in this idea of being a Christian. To be a Christian is very challenging. This idea of changing doesn't really work unless we are dedicated to the outcomes of change. You know, the entire Bible gives us a vision of what it means to be perfect, all the ins and the outs. But it's not an overnight process. Oh, if only that were the case. In Luke chapter 16 and verse 10, and I'm going to read this from the NIV. Luke 16 and verse 10, it says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. The thing is that when we are making 
forward progress, no matter how small it is, and actually the smaller the better, it shows God that we are moving forward, that we can eventually be entrusted with becoming God beings in his family. That is the ultimate goal for us as Christians. But the inverse is is true as well, as is pointed out here. If we are being dishonest with the little bit that we have, essentially fooling and lying to ourselves that we are okay, then this also shows God our character. In Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 10, I'd like to think about this scripture at times. Zechariah 4 and verse 10, it says, Who dares despise a day of small things? Since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel. Yes, the scripture is prophetic in nature. But it's actually something that's very good for us to think about. The most powerful things in our life happen slowly. It takes time for us to become more and more spiritually mature. It takes time to overcome the issues and the sins that we see in our lives. It takes small steps in the right direction but it's expected. Therefore, we have to be making sure that we are making forward progress in areas of our lives. Christ told us to, to build on the rock. Think about that. If we think about our lives on a linear scale, we don't become perfect instantly. It takes a lifetime of learning. It takes constant building. In Zechariah 4 and verse 10, when we just read, it talked about rejoicing with the capstone, that very end piece at the very end. And when you build a house, it's not done in a week. No, it it can take up to a year sometimes to build a house. Maybe even more, depending on the size. We cannot expect to be perfect as human beings. We have so many human tendencies that we, we go through. But when we look into God's word and we juxtapose it with our lives and see where we are doing good, where we are lacking, where we are needing change, that's the forward motion that we need. And the greatest thing is that God's laws never change. Everything that we need as human beings is within his word. And God is looking at the process that we each go through. He's looking at our heart. He's looking to see what type of God beings we will become. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13 says, Ephesians 4 and verse 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to a measure of the statue, stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, 
causing, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Our growth has to be based on true godly love. We are not just here for ourselves. We are here for everyone around us. Not, not just here in the church either. Eventually, it will be the whole world. When we truly care about others, it will have an effect on ourselves and on others. And I fully believe that it has an impact more than we sometimes realize. I've noticed over the years that there is a kind of a ripple effect that goes into the world. We don't have a lot of power and strength in this world. But we do have opportunities wherever we are, whatever we do. We have the chance to make ripple effects out into the world. From the internet, it said that a ripple effect occurs when an initial disturbance to a system propagates outward to disturb an increasingly larger portion of the system, like ripples expanding across the water when an object is dropped into it. How we show up every day in our lives has an outward effect. How we speak to our families, to our friends, the words we choose to use, the emotions we allow ourselves to project, everything matters. So much so it says God takes every word that we say into account. It's so powerful. I'm sure we've all heard the quote attributed to Gandhi, where, which says, be the change you wish to see in the world. I did a little research, and it's actually not something he said, but it was close. The quote that he did say goes like this. We but mirror the world. All the tendencies present in the outer world are to be found in the world of our body. If we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. As a man changes his nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. This is the divine mystery supreme, a wonderful thing it is, and the source of our happiness. We do not we need to not wait to see what others do. When we change something in our lives, it alters us. And it also alters those around us, whether for good or for bad. The changes we make have a ripple effect out into the world. And I think this is why Christ said in Matthew 5, verse 14, that you are the light of the world. That light shines out from us. To what extent that we decide to change, to become closer to God, is going to be the amount of light that we can produce out into this dark world. But in order to shine... We must be taking a look at who we are internally to decide that we want to make changes for that light, to make changes for the people around us that are closest and for the greater good of humankind. The people we interact with daily, our, our family, our friends, church members, people in the world, strangers, everyone is going to be impacted by us in some way. 
And therefore, it's imperative that we start looking at the small details in our lives. We start working to accomplish those things that really matter. It doesn't have to be massive things. Start small. Look for the daily wins that will have the most impact. Start taking action on those things. And it's not a one-fit key for everybody. It's, you're going to have to take time to look into it for yourself. Because it's different for each and every one of us. So what is it that you can take action on daily? Think about this. Write something down. And then work towards that. Even if it's just 1% better every day, that's a compounding effect. That 1% over a lifetime will have more than you can even think about. We are powerful beings because God has created us that way. Let's see what we can do.